Hello, I'm Dr. Andrew Farley with today's episode of the Heartbeat of Faith podcast. Today, we begin a new deep dive into the Spirit of God. Who is He? What does the Bible say about Him? And how are we supposed to relate to Him? I can't wait to begin this journey with you. Your relationship with God's Spirit matters, and I pray these next three episodes encourage you in the truth of your union with Him. Let's begin in a familiar place, the beginning, when God's Spirit was hovering over the face of the chaotic waters. In the very beginning, out of nothingness, God formed and created the expanse of space and the details of Earth. The Earth was empty, chaotic, and without life. God's Spirit hovered over the empty and chaotic void. Then, at an instant, God spoke. Let there be light. He called out, and there was light, just as He commanded. For from God's lips springs forth reality. The Holy Spirit hovered over the void, ready to bring light and life to the world. Through God's Spirit, life was given to creation. That's why the Bible relates the Spirit to breath. He is the life-giving and sustaining one at work among us. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, along with God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son. He's not merely a force or an influence, but a personal being who is fully God. The Holy Spirit is our counselor, comforter, and guide. He dwells within every believer, empowering and equipping us to live the Christian life. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. But when it comes to believers, He reminds us of our identity in Jesus Christ as children of God, and He guides us into all truth. We saw God's Spirit at work among the heroes of old like Ehud, Samson, Joshua, and David. We also saw him at work in the hearts and minds of the prophets like Elijah, Jeremiah, and Isaiah. Just as God's Spirit brought life and vitality to creation in the beginning, He brings life and vitality to you and me. This was represented in Ezekiel's haunting yet beautiful vision of a valley of dry bones. The army of bones is brought to life through the breath of God. Ezekiel nodded and looked upon the desolation. He lifted his voice to the dry bones and spoke the Lord's words to them. As he spoke, the wind picked up as if the breath of God was flowing through the valley. The wind whistled and the sound of rattling filled the atmosphere. Ezekiel watched as the bones rolled across the valley to find one another and come together. Bone found bone, and skeletons were made whole. Sinew wrapped around the dry and blighted bones, and muscles began to form around the limbs. Skin covered them, and Ezekiel saw a sea of people lying lifeless on the ground. There was no life in them, no breath of God's spirit. Ezekiel could feel the light caress of the breeze. In it he heard God speak again, saying, Prophesy to the breath, Ezekiel. Speak for me and declare the four winds of God to breathe life into the dead. Ezekiel was quivering. His heart could barely contain what he was experiencing. At first, Ezekiel said nothing. He struggled with the words as he stared upon the valley of lifeless bodies. He regained his composure and prophesied over the dead bodies with the words of God. And in that instant, the wind howled from every direction, the breath of God's Spirit. The Ruach, the Numa, the same breath that breathed life into mankind blew mightily through the valley. Ironically, Ezekiel was breathless. He watched as life was breathed into the dead bodies. He watched them rise from the ground and stand to their feet. 
Soon the bodies were covered in armor, and a vast army stood before Ezekiel. It was a magnificent sight. The prophet fell to his knees, beholding the army of living bones. You and I were once like those dry bones. Just as they were lifeless and dead, so were we in our spiritual state before encountering the Holy Spirit. But through the work of the Holy Spirit, we're born again and given new life, just as the bones in the vision were brought back to life and formed into a vast army. This transformation is beautifully described in Ezekiel 37, 14, where God says, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. When we place our faith and trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit works in us just as he did in the beginning of creation, bringing us to life. In the Garden of Eden, life was lost due to the fall, but through Christ, life is now restored to us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit hovered over the waters before creation and gave life to the valley of dry bones. Similarly, the Holy Spirit hovered over Jesus when he was baptized and gave life to the disciples on the day of Pentecost. Jesus held up his hand and grinned, Let it be so. It is fitting to fulfill what is about to take place. So John agreed and led Jesus deeper into the water. John held the middle of Jesus' back with one hand and his arm in another. Then John slowly dipped Jesus back into the water. The crowd watched silently as Jesus went under the river. As John brought Jesus back up, the skies opened up. A bright light shone like a second sun, and the Holy Spirit descended down in the form of a dove. All in attendance awed as they heard the voice of God speak for the first time in over 400 years. This is my beloved Son. It is with Him I am pleased. A small wind began to blow through the city of Jerusalem, and the tents in the temple courtyards swayed to the gentle gusts. Among the sea of people were the twelve. They walked with intention, moving towards the temple steps where Jerusalem once stood. Peter and the rest of the disciples stood boldly for all to see. People began to look as the wind picked up even more. Then, like the breath of God himself, a sound from heaven boomed like a mighty wind. The entire house of God was filled with the wind of God. Flames appeared from the sky, resembling tongues of fire. They hovered over the mouths of the disciples. The Holy Spirit had arrived. God's Spirit empowered the disciples to preach the gospel and build His church. That same Spirit raised Christ from the dead and offers new life to you and me today. Many Bible-believing Christians see things differently when it comes to the Holy Spirit. That may be because he works so personally and individually in people's lives. In our next episode, we'll discuss the personal and intimate relationship the Holy Spirit has with each one of us. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Heartbeat of Faith podcast. Follow the podcast so you can learn about the Bible in this entertaining and inspiring way. Download the Pray.com app, and for more encouragement in God's grace, visit andrewfarley.org. That's andrewfarley.org. Does your money stretch as far as it used to? Most likely no. Here's why. It took 200 years for the U.S. to print its first $5 trillion. Today, Washington has done that in just three years. The problem? Every new dollar makes each of your dollars worth less. Our sponsor, Birch Gold Group, has helped tens of thousands of Americans protect their IRAs or 401ks from the dollar's loss in value with physical gold and silver. Now you can too. Get a free info kit on gold right now by texting the word Heartbeat to 989898. 
with an A-plus rating with the BBB, you're in good hands with Birch Gold. So get your no-cost, no-obligation info kit now by texting HEARTBEAT to the number 989898.